Hi, it's Dwyer. Dwyercrime.blog, a free site. Also, richarddwyer.co, my firm site. Today is Memorial Day, May the 31st, 2021. Let's discuss an important piece of physical evidence in the Kennedy assassination that I believe discredits the Warren Commission. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now the Warren Commission concluded that a magic bullet, CE399, Right, which weighed 158.6 grains when found. Again, 158.6 grains when found. Caused all of Governor Connolly's injuries. Right, all of them. The Warren Commission wants you to believe that Governor Connolly was only hit with one bullet. Well, let's take a hard look at it. Let's ask ourselves the question of whether it's credible. Now understand, as a bullet leaves fragments, it loses grains. So the question arises, what was the grain count for CE399 when it was shot from the rifle. Let's go one step further and keep in mind, I'm assuming that CE399, for purposes of this video, which was found on a stretcher and which has a questionable chain of custody. I've made a video on this, it's up, please research it. I'm assuming that this magic bullet was actually fired from a rifle, right? Well, understand, the FBI had a ballistics expert, Robert Fraser. His work can be found at volume three, page 430 of the Warren Commission. Let me also point out too, I'm gonna make citations to the Warren Commission. I want to encourage high school and college and postgraduate students who have an avid interest in seeking the truth to do their own independent research on this subject. Because in my opinion, the truth is not even hiding. It's in broad daylight for anyone who cares to look at it. Well, FBI ballistics expert Robert Fraser looked at three representative Manlicher Carcano bullets. The three weighed, the first one, 160.85 grains, right? Just 2.2 grains more than the 158.6 grains of CE399. After that bullet is supposed to have hit two people, Kennedy and Governor Connolly, right? The next bullet, the middle bullet, weighed 161.1 grains. Finally, the biggest bullet, reviewed by Robert Fraser, weighed 161.5 grains. These were supposed to be representative Manilka Carcano bullets. Now let's be generous here. Let's add three grains to CE399. to make this bullet bigger than any of the three representative bullets that Robert Fraser used for comparison purposes. So let's assume that 3E399, the magic bullet, weighed 158.6 grains plus three grains. In other words, 161.6 grains before it was shot out of a rifle, assuming this bullet was shot out of a rifle. Now understand, that means that the 
most grains this bullet could have lost in terms of leaving bullet fragments in Kennedy and Connolly is three grains. Right? Understand, this bullet is 158.6. The heaviest bullet reviewed by Robert Fraser is 161.5. We're assuming this bullet was 161.6 grains when shot. We're making it a bigger bullet. So understand, if the bullet fragment evidence equals more than three grains, then some of these fragments came from a bullet other than the magic bullet, CE399. Now understand, when a bullet is fired from a rifle, it will lose half a grain. Please, independently research this. Due to friction and what have you, bullets typically lose half a grain upon being shot. So that would leave 2.5 grains to work with here. In other words, the bullet fragment evidence from Connolly could not exceed mathematically 2.5 grains. Now we know that at least two fragments were taken from Connolly's wrist. That's volume 17, page 841 of the Warren Commission report. Right, two fragments. We know that the bigger of the two fragments that were taken from Connolly's wrist weighed half a grain. Right, so that leaves us with two grains to work with, folks. Well, let me just point out, we're missing some grains. We know that from the testimony of Dr. Charles Gregory, who participated in operating on Connolly. His testimony can be found at volume four, page 123 of the Warren Commission report. Apparently, some fragments went missing. There was a nurse who assisted, Audrey Bell. She gave an interview in March of 1997. That document is called ARRB MD 184. Please Google that document. Right? She testifies about seeing several fragments removed from John Connolly. Well, let's not even focus on the missing fragments. Right, by the way, the 0.5 grain fragment is referenced in volume five, page 72 of the Warren Commission. Just understand that we know that a fragment, two millimeters times half a millimeter, was left in Connolly's thigh. That's volume four, page 113 of the Warren Commission. We also know that another fragment was left in Connolly's femur, right? The way surgery operates is sometimes you see a fragment, it's too hard to get to. The benefit of trying to remove it outweighs the cost of doing so. Well, here's the kicker, right? Understanding that there are two grains to work with that the surgeons were more concerned with saving Connolly's life than with preserving evidence, knowing that there are missing fragments. We're not even going to include them in our math, right? We have two grains to work with, right? Given that the magic bullet likely misses 
uh, loses half a grain upon being fired, and given that a half a grain fragment is removed from Connolly's wrist, right? Keep in mind, there's a second. We don't know where it is. So we have two grains left to work with. Well, folks, Dr. Robert Shaw at volume four, page 113 of the Warren Commission report testified that more than three grains of metal were left in Connolly's wrist. More than three grains. Folks, that's one more grain than we're allowed. If CE399 was your typical Manlicher-Carcano bullet. Think about it. We're already one grain over. And we haven't even counted the fragments that were lost. The fragments that Dr. Charles Gregory saw that have been lost. The fragments that nurse Audrey Bell saw that were lost. Understand, just the fragments we know of, just on Connolly, we're not even mentioning Kennedy, where the bullet is supposed to have entered his back, then come through his throat. We're not even looking at the fragments in Kennedy, just on Connolly. The fragments are excessive. They're inconsistent with the magic bullet theory. Right? The fragments imply that some of them came from somewhere other than CE399. If CE399 was your typically sized Manlicher Carcano bullet, well, let's talk about the pathologists for the Kennedy assassination, right? I view this as very important, right? We're not talking about hiring an expert witness here. Understand the names I've mentioned are the people who operated on Connolly, right? These are neutral parties, not advocates. Well, let's talk about the pathologists who did the Kennedy autopsy. Dr. James Yoon, let's read a quote, right? He was asked whether he thought that CE399 caused all of Connolly's wounds. Right? And, of course, he's shown the bullet. Here's what he said. And you can find his testimony at volume 2, pages 374 to 376. He said, I think that is most unlikely. This missile is basically intact. Its jacket appears to me to be intact. And I do not understand how it could possibly have left fragments in either of those locations. I doubt if this missile would have been left, would have left behind it any metallic fragments from its physical appearance at this time. Let me repeat that sentence. I doubt if this missile would have left behind it any metallic fragments from its physical appearance at this time. Metallic fragments were not removed and are still present in Governor Connolly's thigh. I can't conceive of where they came from this missile. Folks, that's Dr. James Yoon's. Folks, he's the chief pathologist for the JFK autopsy. Again, Volume 2, pages 374 to 376. Now, he was helped 
full disclosure here. He was helped by two other pathologists, Dr. J. Thornton Boswell and Dr. Pierre Fink. Now, would it surprise you to learn that none of these pathologists, none of them, none, thought that all of the fragments came from CE399? None of them. J. Thornton Boswell's testimony can be found at volume two, page 377 of the War and Commission Report. Dr. Pierre Fink's testimony can be found at volume two, pages 381 to 382. Dr. Fink flatly states, there are too many fragments. Let me repeat that. There are too many fragments. So when Governor Connolly died, understand families have rights. The family was asked, if Dr. Connolly could be examined so that we could get the bullet fragments out of his body. The family declined. Right? This is the United States of America. Families can do that. Especially when the person shot didn't commit a crime, isn't being investigated for one. Right? So just understand the bullet fragment evidence doesn't make sense. It's inconsistent with the magic bullet theory. There are too many fragments. Understand, too, the early 60s were a different time than now. Many of these doctors had military experience back then. Right, World War II or Korean War experience. They would have experience in looking at bullet wounds. They know just from the fragments that CE399 could not have been the bullet that caused all of them. Let me just point out too that Connolly himself, Google this, believed from the timing of the shots that there were more than one gunman. Now somehow, when you start referring to evidence, people start calling you a conspiracy theorist. Right, no, you're a researcher. The research will take you where it takes you. Just understand, if you believe as every pathologist involved in the Kennedy autopsy believes that there are too many bullet fragments, then you necessarily have to believe that there's a second gunman, that the official version of the Warren Commission report is a fallacy. That's how I see it. I hope the citations to the Warren Commission report help. I look forward to your comments. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this video. Let me also point out, too, that the audios for the crime videos that I do on this YouTube channel can be found at dwirecrime.blog and are also available on Spotify and other podcast systems. Thank you for stopping by.